the special meeting of Usara City Council for August the 2nd, 2017 is called to order. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. McKeever. Here. Ross. Here. Wireball. Here. Truca. Here. Sad. Here. O'Rourke. Here. Pfeiffer. Here. The reason this is a special meeting last night was National Night Out, and uh, uh, we moved uh, the council meeting so that uh, anybody that wanted to could attend, and I think it was very well attended. It was actually a beautiful evening. A lot of people were at uh, different parties in town. I think there were 15, one thing, Mr. Mayor? 15. 15 of them? We made 12 of them. You, you, made, made, you made 11, by the way. I know. <laughs> You can only eat so much water now. <laughs> and, hot, and hot dogs. And hot dogs and you know, everything else that was out there. It was a really nice evening. Um, before you, you have the minutes from the July the 18th, 2017 regular meeting. I need a motion to accept those minutes. So move. Second. Motion by Mr. Wireball, second by Mr. McKeever to accept the minutes from the July 18th, 2017 regular meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. You also have the minutes from the July 20th, 2017 special meeting. I need a motion to accept those minutes. Second. Motion by Ms. Sachs, second by Mr. Pfeiffer. All those in favor of accepting the July the 20th, 2017 special meeting minutes say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. And finally, you have the uh, July the 24th uh, minutes from the public hearing. I need a motion to accept those minutes. Second. Motion by Mr. O'Rourke, second by Mr. Wirebaugh to accept the July the 24th public hearing minutes. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. This is where we grant permission for visitors to speak. This evening we have uh, Don Cheer with the Disabled American Veterans. Don, if you'd step to the podium, please. We always look forward to seeing you every year up here. Uh, I got about three things tonight. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the mayor and his crews for getting the sidewalk fixed up by my house. It had fallen in when the storm sewer gave way, and now it's handicapped accessible for the people in the area. We thank you and your crews for doing a great job. Uh, I'm Don Shear, 1590 Rosedale Avenue, and I'm Secretary of the Disabled American Veterans, and I'm also Secretary and Treasurer for the Crawford County Veterans Hall of Fame. How many have been up to see what we're doing up at the courthouse? We will be putting in our final wing, the one that we dropped about two months ago in Broke. We're putting in tomorrow, weather permitting. That will get the first phase of that done and then within a week we should be started with a walkway going north to the next larger sidewalk coming out from the courthouse and we're going to use that to honor all the veterans that died while they were in the service we have like 450 names we found so far from the civil war through the last ones and we're still going to be selling papers forever, probably. But uh, right now, there's probably a three-month lag from getting the order in, getting the granite, and then getting it here and getting an initial. So, if you want it in by Veterans Day, you should be getting your order in to us pretty quick. We have like 85 that are being delivered the 15th of this month, and then they'll be engraved. And we'll get them put in, but with the cost of what it costs to put them in, we have to do at least 10 or 15 to make it economically feasible for us. We just can't send a crew up to do one, you know, it just won't pay. But we've got about 140,000 in it, another 
40, 50 seconds. And we were, Doc sat there smiling. He, he was with the Telegraph one when we started, and we were talking 35,000, 40,000, and this is what it turned into. But I think, I think the community and the county will enjoy it. And we're going to divide the sections up. I went up to the courthouse to the Veterans Service Office, and I asked for the dates of when the different services were formed. I knew what the Marine Corps was, because I was a son of a Marine, so you learn that real quick. But uh, kind of surprised me. I thought we'd been in the Army, Navy, Marine Corps. It came up and they gave me the list and it was National Guard. And I said, ooh, and it was 1631, 140 some years before the rest of them were formed. So, so that's kind of neat. And then I looked down and they had Navy and after the Revolutionary War, Congress did away with the Navy. And then they found out the Marines needed somebody to take them wherever they had to go, so they reinstated the Navy and we've been stuck with them ever since. <laughs> we're going to have 20 by 20 papers for all of them. And my boss, Chucky Christman, said, well, you know, yesterday he called me and says, what about the Merchant Marines? So we're going to get a 20 by 20 for the Merchant Marines to honor them, too. Uh, the Shire Fire Department called us up and we're making up 20 by 20 for them. And then what they're going to do is buy four by eight pavers to honor all the firemen in the past that have served in the service, which is the vast majority of them. And they'll put those around the 20 by 20 paver. And they were saying that they were going to kind of elbow the SARS police department and Galleon Police and Fire Department, so that works out that great, if not, you know, we'll get there one way or the other. And we are, we have our people put in for the Hall of Fame for the November on Veterans Day, and that'll be at 7 o'clock at the uh, Sarris High School. And we may have a couple, we may have, I can't say, we may have a couple of ladies going in this year, which is, we've been trying to get for a long time, because for 10 years all we had was men. And the ladies did a lot for us during the wars. Uh, my other one is DAB Forget Me Nots. This is our fundraiser that we do every year. Today, I spent my day running up and down week four. I got about 20 of these cans put out in different businesses. They'll be out for two months. So if you have a little bit of change, drop it in, it all adds up. And August 4th and 5th, we will be at Walmart in the morning. And on Friday, we'll be out in the evening. And then uh, August 11th and 12th, we'll be doing downtown Desires will be Carly's, the post office, True Value and Kroger's, and that'll be in the morning. So we appreciate any help the community can do. They never let us down. And uh, each year we seem to be better and better and just enables us to help the veterans here in the county out more. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Good. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much, John. Uh, next on our agenda, we have uh, Chief Kepke is going to address us about Operation Hope. Yes. Chief, good to have you here this evening. How many parties did you get to last night? Thank you, Madam President. <laughs> I attended, I believe, nine parties. Nine? Out of the 15. Okay. And I uh, want to say thank you to City Council and Mayor and all the officials, Fire Department, EMS, Guardian Angels. I lost track of all the different people that spent time out of, the, you know, out of their evenings to get to all the parties. It was very important for the people to put the parties on. And thank you very much to the people that organized the parties. There were some really different things this year. We saw cloggers, we saw circus clowns. What did you see that was different? I missed the clowns. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it was a great event. It's a unifying force in the city and National Night Out 
began in 1984. That I lost track of how many years. A long time ago, and that was nationwide, national crime, national night out with uh, police and the public partnering against crime uh, to send a message to criminals out there that uh, the majority of people are law-abiding and uh, and are not afraid to take back their streets. You hear that a lot about take back the town. Galleon just had a rally called uh, "Take Back Their City," something like that, and that's what. Uh, I'm going to hand this out to everybody. It's called Unity in the Community. So, if you bear with me. Still have them, 
and but it's because of the hard work that's been going on by the churches and uh, by the, the uh, rehabilitation resources uh, everyone in the rehabilitation field social services banding together and not ignoring the problem okay and just a, another kind of look at Summit County, look at Norton, look at Usiris, and the police chief stood up and talked about the problem. It was like we were playing back tapes with Crawford County. The police chief said, please, everybody, work together because we can't arrest our way out of this problem. We say that till we're blue in the face. No pun intended. But that's, that's the drama of everything. We keep going on overdose calls. We use naloxone. Naloxone is now controversial. But all it is is uh, restoring breathing. It's really beyond the heroin, the carfentanil. There's a police officer in Flostoria who had to be revived with naloxone. A canine dog had to be revived. So it's, it's more than just the addict. It's the wellness of the whole community. Uh, there was an audience of 500 people in the, in the uh, gym. And talking about addiction, they were all people that had been there, done that, all raised their hands. They, they were recovery addicts. And the reason they're still alive and helping others is because of programs like Operation Hope, the Police Assisted Addiction Recovery Initiative. There were police officers that had revived some of the people in the audience multiple times. And they're all part of resources. I came back from that conference with more than an additional 20 places that if somebody comes to our department for help, that we can pick the phone up and find a bed for those people because these are people that are living it every day in recovery and want to help people in our community. We had, uh, we're not one year into it, but in Operation Hope, it's not what we do as a police department. I just stay out of the way, really. The volunteers do it. People, and I want to get this out to the public more now. Um, we didn't know if we'd be overwhelmed because the police department individual officers couldn't do what the volunteers do and that's to spend hour after hour with somebody or calling them because they get cold feet and don't go that day to rehabilitation but we've uh, had more than 40 people in our community go to rehabilitation which i don't think the public knows yet and that has definitely helped keep the overdose statistics down here at Crawford county so that's the that's the good news from operation hope and it's the good news from Hope Over Heroin. It's the good news from the churches that have meetings. Um, I know church tonight on Wednesday because it's Wednesday, not Tuesday, but uh, for example, Victory and Truth has a meeting tonight. One of our Operation Hope volunteers is there helping support other people. We have 13 in, in the program that are volunteers that have driven people, driven people to the airport, driven people to Toledo, and had to drive them back because they didn't, they didn't want to stay. But they're willing to, to do that, to put in the time, to put in the effort. And uh, we're going to follow up uh, ahead of the community care march, which will happen what day in November? So first Saturday in November, we're going to think that is. So the so first Saturday first in November, we're having the community care march. But it takes a constant effort to say, hey, we have great news, but we have to stay with it and keep the momentum up. And, I'll turn to unity in the community. One of the organizations that has helped place people in our community is from the Journey Life Center in Mansfield, Spring Hill, 39. And it's called Project One, Recovery Road. And I'll give you a little example in detail. We have a, a pregnant woman, excuse me, it wasn't that case. It was a woman and an eight-year-old child. It's hard enough to find a bed for an individual adult, but a woman with an eight-year-old child, we had we, we took her to the uh, domestic violence shelter in Marion. She needed to be protected from uh, a violent uh, uh, significant other. And we called Project One for help. The, there was a Facebook message put out there, and within an hour we had 13 different options for that lady and her eight-year-old to travel to and she's doing very well at a program as we speak right now that was three months ago 
So that's the kind of power there is in networking. And the community in the community is part of that networking. It's going to be an event with more resources available on the square. It's not going to detour traffic. I want to, it's, uh, it's, like a, uh, it's like what we had last night with block parties. It is uh, blocking off the southeast corner of the square. There will be a stage for speakers. And uh, there will be resource tables. There will be an area for children to play while the adults can talk to people in social services to get help. And uh, hopefully we'll have some success like we did November 12th with the GRACE program when we had more than 25 that went to get help. And I know it's over 50% success rate from that event alone. And uh, we hope for more and more of that and on September 16th, this is the day the water plant opens. But it'll be ongoing from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. on the square. And we're going to set up at noon. And of course, welcome everyone during the day to stop in and see what's going on. So, unity in the community, you have it in front of you there. Uh, Project One, Operation Hope. And Santana Stamper is part of Operation Hope. She was going to speak tonight, wasn't able to attend. But she's also part of Project One. And that's, that's the power of networking right there. She's in our community, but part of a program in Mansfield. And we're working on expanding, expanding Operation Hope. Uh, Mansfield doesn't have a, poli a police department program, but what they do there, they have an opiate response team. When they have an overdose, they have lay people that will go with a police officer to the, the site where there was an overdose and try to reach out to the people. We're going to try to do that with Operation Hope rather than waiting for people to come to us all the time. We'll do it both ways. So, any questions about any of that? That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, and that's what's going on. Um, we still, and if you look real close at Operation Hope, we have no room in Crawford County for drug dealing, and we're still arresting people as aggressively as possible. To make uh, don't get any kind of mixed message that we're we're uh, not aggressively enforcing drug offenses that we continue to do as we speak. And even during National Night Out, we had. Uh, we had three, three officers couldn't go to parties because they had a, an arrest in the 200 block of West Mansfield. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. <coughs> Any questions? Any particular questions for the uh, chief this evening? Thank you very, very much. Very impressive. Thank you very much for coming and sharing this with us, with us well, this evening. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address council this evening? No one? Uh, communications and petitions. We have one letter. This was uh, addressed to the mayor and other elected officials dated um, Monday, July 31. Uh, to the P. Cyrus leaders on behalf of the Hyde family, thank you so much for participating yesterday in the memorial dedication of the Larry Hyde Courts at Alma Park. It was an unbelievable event made possible by your efforts and participation. As we were leaving the park last night, there was a pickup game of basketball with people watching from the new benches. A truly moving and amazing sight to give back to the community in honor of my uncle Larry. He was looking down and smiling for sure. Thank you all again, Michael Hyde. Thank you very much for the motion to accept and file this. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Ms. Sack to accept and file the letter from Michael Hyde. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those say no. Thank you. Uh, standing committee reports. Uh, Mr. Troop, I think we're going to get started this evening. Okay. Sorry, City Joint Regular Committees met Thursday, July 20, 2017, at 6 p.m. Um, Sorry, City Joint Regular Committee meeting was called to order by Troop at 6 p.m. Uh, public participation, there was none. An order of business was a service committee, and it convened at 6 p.m., and it dealt with waterline rules and ordinances, section 914. Members are Dan Wireball, Dan Ross, Bill O'Rourke, and myself, Chairman. Number one, waterline rules and ordinances, section 914, 
Lynn McKeever of McKeever & Associates asked the committee for its opinion of a proposal to extend the city's water lines into surrounding counties, or county. Uh, grants and loans are available to pay the costs of any expansion, while the county would pay an assessment. The water would be used for consumption, not to fight fires, which is the responsibility of the various townships. It was noted that the city has lost more than 400 water customers over the past 10 years. The keeper stated that adding more customers for the city's water would be a long-term process, but if the committee wishes to proceed with the proposal, section 914.01 of the codified ordinances would have to be amended in several places. Wireball made a motion seeking legislation making those changes with a second by O'Rourke. Motion passed by voice vote. Trooper recess the service committee at 6.57 p.m. Questions or comments from Mr. Trooper regarding this meeting? None. Moving on to Finance Committee, Mr. O'Rourke. Finance Committee was met on Thursday the 20th at 6.57 p.m. Members of Steve Bice, Dan Warball, and Monica Sack, and O'Rourke Chairman, all were present. Item one, annual audit report by Perry and Associates. Mr. Warbaugh made a motion not to seek a post audit meeting on the report presented to council by Auditor Joe Shipper. Second by Mr. Piper. Motion passed by Boyce Phillips. The matter will now go before the full council. The work recess the finance committee at 7 o'clock p.m. Any questions? Comments? Would you finish that? Uh, before we do that, let's take uh, the vote. Uh, all the entire council needs to vote on that post audit meeting. All those in favor of not having the post audit meeting with Perian Associates, I, well, I need a motion first. Okay, second. Who's that? Mr. McKeever. Motion by Mr. O'Rourke, second by Mr. McKeever to uh, not ask for a post audit meeting with Perian Associates. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you. Now, finish, please. Public participation was none. Item five, the work week asked for a motion to adjourn the joint regular committees. Motion by Ms. Sack and second by Mr. McKeever. To adjourn at 7 o'clock p.m. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, Traffic Commission, we have no minutes this evening. Does anyone have questions for the mayor regarding traffic? Well, Monica and I do. <laughs> we have concerned citizens on Walnut Street, especially in the 900 block, where my son's truck got hit in front of the, uh, due to uh, excessive speed. Yes, they were, they were concerned or asking about street signs, as in children at play, additional speed limit signs, something to curtail the, uh, especially where there's a lot of kids. I, I will, uh, is, is it okay, man? Sure, please do. I was there, I took all the pictures of the crash. Yeah. That was a drugged driver. And actually I'm gonna do a uh, public awareness with a picture of your truck, son's truck in the air. The, mm -hmm. the uh, driver of the purple car was uh, asleep at the wheel, is the most generous way I could describe it. She was drugged. Mm -hmm. uh, so, to take it a step further, it had nothing to do with speech. She had no control of the deadly weapon. Right. Um, she was not. She does not represent the average or common driver in this city because most everybody, 99.9% .9 do not do what was done that day. Um, I hope everyone does respect the 25 mile per hour speed limit on all residential streets. It's. Uh, I think we all read that in driver's ed. <laughs> so we don't need to be reminded 25 miles per hour on all residential streets. One of the charges against the driver of the purple car should be, and I hope it sticks, is endangering children because in front of that house there were several toddlers, one to three years old. Two of mine. And they were standing a mere 15 feet from the truck and the truck saved them. Mm -hmm. um, the, the southbound purple car blasted a tree it's a miracle it didn't overturn. The wheels, the, the uh, tires blew out, and it gouged the road from the east side all the way to the truck. Both rims flattened. 
tires flattened and rims flattened, and the, and the momentum of the purple car was still fast enough. Estimated speed probably 40 to 45. Uh, drugged, and the foot probably stuck on the, the pedal because they heard the roar of the engine about 10, 5, 10 houses down north of them. And uh, lifted the truck, what, about 3,000 pounds, lifted a foot or two off the ground, uh, under the purple car underwriting truck. Um, there appeared to be no injuries to the driver. She was laying across the seat. Some consciousness came back to her, and she started eating what was left of the cheeseburger she had in her hand. It was on the dashboard. Um, that, that, in a nutshell, is drugged driving. And if anyone takes uh, controlled prescription pills, they should follow the directions on the label and not operate heavy machinery. That goes for all of us law-abiding drivers. Uh, that, that particular day, the controlled substance, the prescription pills were being used in a recreational fashion to get high, um, being abused, and uh, I did not see that if there's a felony indictment coming on that. I haven't seen, I haven't seen a report yet uh, on the felony, so yeah. I'll have to wait. Yeah. So, um, I hope that explains it somewhat. I wrote, I wrote part of the police report so I could keep speaking on it. But, no, I, I, they appreciate that. They appreciated your quick response, but still, you know, they're saying with all the kids, especially in South Walnut. Um, and to add a little backstory, Wyandotte County was chasing a fleeing felon driver that hit their back earlier in the year at uh, 945. The, the end of that. If everyone remembers, there was a picture of a chase from Richland County that ended at the hospital. A similar kind of scene ended at the place set in the back of 945 South Walnut. As the uh, deputy and state patrol made the arrest there, we weren't even aware of Cyrus. It had happened and it ended before we even got him. I don't think they even bothered calling. They arrested him. And uh, we heard the sirens and noticed that there was a problem down there. Yeah. And uh, because it happened rather quickly. It was a Saturday or Sunday morning. But uh, what are the odds the same house would have two type of drivers on both sides? Yeah. It, yeah. I did notice that the uh, on Spring Street, I believe it was, you have the, the thing out that tells you how fast you're going. Yes. You have it over on Spring Street. And we yeah. have a list, actually, a, a, a list of speeding problems in town Southern, Poplar, oh. Walnut, Kaler, Tiffin Street, West and East Irving, and we haven't been moving the traffic trailer around uh, weekly. It's more like monthly. So I don't know that we'll get to each one before wintertime. But uh, it's, a, it's a reminder and it raises the blood pressure of the driver. That's, it, it doesn't keep stats for us. Um, we are looking into some of that. And that trailer was from the uh, Bariska Foundation, the Bariska Estate. Uh, her estate purchased that back in the early 2000s. And the technology now actually has come down in price, and there's technology out there that would give us some more statistical information. Ballpark, about $5,000 investment from the city if we wanted to get about two signs to help us monitor traffic without, without what happened at the legislature or Supreme Court this week saying that traffic enforcement remotely is, uh, I guess, the law director can speak to it. We don't do that in Cyrus, and I don't think we want to. But yeah. you could, if you were to ask about it, you could yeah, talk about that. They keep going back and forth on whether it's permitted or not. Mm -hmm. Right now it's permitted. Right. So. But uh, in the meantime, we want to just raise awareness. Remember drivers at 25 on all city streets, unless it's a state route or posted otherwise. That's that's the rule of thumb. So, um, any questions about that? Mr. Chairman? All those streets you just mentioned, how many uh, traffic tickets have been issued? I can't give you an exact number, but we were, we were writing traffic tickets all the time. So, Mr. Law Director, come in. On those streets, I, I have no way to know. I, okay. I, don't, I don't track them by. You can have all the speed trails you want. Mm -hmm. Enforcement is your answer. If we're getting the complaints, I think it's up to you and the mayor to have your, your people out there. I, I will say, I have noticed, especially my different hours I was working. I've seen your officers up and down Poplar and Oakwood. They come different ways trying to, 
I do see them. Yeah. And, um, and they do enforce it in a moving fashion. They don't have to be parked to the, the moving range. Right, right. They are they're driving in that. And because as you offered your driveway. It, it's yeah. still available. The, uh, <laughs> It's, it's hard to explain, but the, the radar unit is a fixed mount in the car, and it's only pointing out the front yeah. of the window, so they have to either parallel park or be on the window. They can park right front we have the acquired, We have acquired two new units called the Stalker, we, and it has a front, uh, like the State Patrol, we, we never had a rear radar, but uh, one of our night shift officers has the front and rear radar now, and he's doing that very effectively. He likes having the, the rear antenna, so. Yeah, if you're speeding up behind Officer Wolf at night, he might just activate the rear antenna. <laughs> yeah. I mean, still, do you think about children at play science? I mean, I don't know what the cost of them are. I kind of defer to Bravo on that. I'm not, you know, I know when I, uh, my kids were young and playing on Plum Street there, um, and I came to the mayor and asked him, you know, can we put a children at play? And he, he said to me, they don't do this. He doesn't do that because it's a liability issue for the city to put that up. Now, that's what I was told. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know if that's a possibility. It's, I, I think with a case like, typically speeders tend to be young people, um, especially young men, um, but I'm not, not sure the that ones I've seen. I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure they're gonna be, you know, children at play, I and mean, you've got the whole issue of, of not just drug driving, um, you know, Bill brings up the point, I mean, it's, it's the distracted driving is, is a huge thing. I, I sat tonight and watched cars go by the way for red light, and about, you know, one out of maybe eight people, uh, they're looking at a phone, you know. They may not be texting, but they're looking at their phone, checking Facebook or whatever, I don't know what they're doing, but that's, that's, a, that's an issue along with speeding. We've got, We've got some serious potential issues. The, uh, the biggest offense we have in municipal court, traffic related, is the first degree misdemeanor driver who doesn't have a driver's license and has no entitlement to be on the road in the first place. Uh, one, uh, some, some say one out of five drivers don't have a license or driving privileges. MP Cyrus is probably closer to one out of eight or nine. Five or six a week at least, yes. Really, just to catch. And a lot of times, a lot of times the officers will stop somebody for speed and the offense, they find out no driving privilege and that's, that's what the charge is. So uh, we don't stack charges on tickets. Right. So. Can I just make a suggestion? Excuse me, Bill, go ahead. I uh, reference a sign there. I mean, I've been on this street 29 years and be real honest with you, uh, on the side of the streets you want to put it on, I don't think the number of cars that park there, I don't think it's going to be real visible and they're going to have to pay much attention to it anyway. I'm just saying if you put it on the side where there's no parking, at least something. I, it's just a suggestion. Yeah. Madam Whatever you can do. Right. Right. Madam President, can I make a suggestion? Why don't we <clears throat> continue this discussion at, uh, at the Traffic Commission, uh, you know, and, and, and invite the public and everyone to and do we have the next place she to be there. Yeah. I know we can talk about some of these things. So maybe get a get a plan and, and uh, you know, go in greater detail on it. And uh, I'll bring one that uh, West Mansfield Street near Hartland and View Cyrus. It's 55 miles per hour on one side of the street, 25 on the other. And it's probably, I think we've talked about it, but it'd be great if we could address that. And at the West End Parkland, have 35 maybe, some kind of a buffer from 55 to 25 because you get to DT patrolling, and you're in theory supposed to go from 55 to 25. Uh, it's, uh, we had a problem like that on Kerstetter Road a while back and it was fixed, but yeah. I, that might make it to council. So. Do we have a, uh, a traffic commission scheduled yet or not? Let's we'll we'll see it scheduled right now. Okay. How about Friday, August 25th at 10 a.m.? Friday, August the 25th at 10 a.m. Okay. Thank you. Other traffic questions, comments? I have one, but I'll save it uh, at the mayor reason report. Probably the only thing that I would like to say about it is that uh, since now I am in the middle of living in a uh, construction zone, uh, the uh, when the signs say the streets closed, the streets closed. I'm amazed the number of people that go through and think that the, there are big trucks. There's big 
machinery that's moving around down there and they think that they can fit through it. And that's not a good thing to see because you're going to lose. Those things are a lot bigger than you are, right? A lot of them, yes. So uh, be aware of that. And I know, be kind to your neighbors because you're, everybody's trying to find a place to park. If you can't park at your home on Southern, you're parking somewhere else. Be kind to your neighbors and make sure you leave plenty of room for them. And uh, don't think that everything can squeeze through a tiny little area. I saw a big truck that was hauling out the dirt backing down E Street today. And with cars parked and a sign and everything else, and I'm going, oh, I didn't need to watch that. So uh, uh, be, be aware of all that. It just need, takes a little bit of common sense, I think. OK, I need a motion to accept the committee minutes and related committee reports collectively. Second. Motion by Mr. O'Rourke, second by Mr. Chuka to accept the uh, committee re uh, minutes and related committee reports. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. We'll move on to the report of city officers. Mayor Reeser. Yes, thank you, Madam President. Um, well, you know, Sunday was a special day for us. I know we, we had to keep it quiet to make it a surprise uh, to the Hyde family, but I, would, I, I hope you all checked your email and saw that I sent an email announcing it late on Friday. So we had a wonderful turnout. Uh, well over 100, 150 people there. Um, Hyde family was was thrilled and is just shocked. <laughs> uh, we were happy to dedicate our basketball court at All Miller Park to Larry Hyde. Well, you knew Larry, longtime resident, supporter of uh, athletics, involved in many other things, including he sat in this room as a member of city council. Um, they, uh, they came from all parts of the country for their family reunion this year. and. Uh, um, Michael, the nephew, whose uh, letter you wrote, reached out probably in the spring, early spring, and and was looking for a way that uh, you know they could partner with the city to uh, to honor Larry. I said I think that's the perfect idea. Courts were in need of some rehab at that time, and uh, you know they, they agreed to uh, to the changes, and we had some nice amenities like benches, some trees, we had a wonderful display. Of, uh, I hope you, have, you get a chance to see it. If you haven't seen it, it's really impressive. And it's probably, I don't see where there's a nicer outdoor court uh, anywhere. And if you, uh, if you, the saying in the movie, I can't remember what the movie was, uh, Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. I mean, if you fix it up, they will come. I mean, the first night there, we had 20 kids playing basketball. And it's been busy ever since then. It's, it's really, really a nice, uh, Nice thing for the city. We thank the Hyde family for partnering with us. And uh, now we got to turn our attention to tennis courts. They are in pathetic shape and getting worse. Uh, hope to get it done as soon as possible, if this year if we can. Um, same thing, I expect to people to start playing tennis again if we don't have to worry about the Wimbledon effect of all the grass growing. So we mentioned also National Night Out was a success. We hustled. We made. Uh, you know, quite a few, we made almost all of them. Um, everyone was uh, very gracious and, and, and very complimentary of, uh, of the city and how things look and they're, it was really nice to get out. You know? And just unfortunately, we just couldn't make all of them. And like the Chief said, it makes us closer as a community. So thanks to the police department for heading that up. Um, Flowers Festival is just around the corner, and uh, I mean they're working hard this year. Those guys said they've got new people, new blood. Um, I, I, I like their idea for the lead float. They're going to have 50 years of mayors since it's Brody's 50th anniversary. There's going to be either the living mayors or family members on, on the, uh, in the floats every time. We've heard from all uh, mayors and all. Uh, you know, our, our relatives, and we're going to have, uh, it'll be in there three nights. Very nice. Uh, Mike Jawine, our Attorney General, will be coming on Saturday to be in the parade. Um, as Chief mentioned earlier, there's another large event on September 16th. That's the uh, dedicated new water treatment plant. We're working on a punch out list now. Um, things like uh, just cleaning it up, little things that have to be tweaked. The outdoor landscaping will be going in soon. Uh, grass, more grass planted, those types of things. 
Uh, invitations have gone out. We've heard back from quite a few people. It's going to be a huge celebration. We're going to the tentative plan right now is to start the tours at 10, and uh, we'll have a dedication at noon. In case anyone wonders, the Buckeyes don't play till four, so we have plenty of time. And uh, yeah. no, <laughs> yes, and so that's all I have for tonight, except I have one referral. It's that I would like to refer the repair of the swimming pool, which we have a large crack in the swimming pool to lands and buildings and finance. Okay, any questions or comments for the mayor? Did you get an investment on the crack? Uh, we have one so far, but we're, we're going to get others too. Okay. 85,000 was the first estimate, so. <laughs> Don't fall out of your chair. Yeah, well, I didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Well, it's cheaper than a new one. Uh, still in pretty good shape, except for the ground. I have several. Okay. Um, I got good to email the other day on the council questions from last meeting, and the first one had it was stated look at Beale Avenue wherever crossing from the lighting and or sidewalk for pedestrians. Uh, I wasn't just talking to the railroad; I was talking from the railroad out to Beale Avenue. Put a sidewalk the whole way, all the way out to Whetstone? Beal. Where do you want to start it? Oh, all the way to Beal, all the way through to Beal, okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Um, well, we could, we could look at that. I, I'm not sure. Are we allowed using community funds for sidewalks? Do you know what you're Okay. Item uh, two. I, I've seen it all over town, but the. Um, Along the curbs, grass, grass and weeds are growing. Yes, we have an issue there. We've and they either need sprayed, burned, yeah. or else they're going to yeah, break we, up the pavement. Yes, that's a good point. We've been talking about that. We've had some issues. We've had two people off sick, and we've been a little shorthanded. It's, it's going to be attended to. We had a discussion on this last week. As I know, once you start getting in the asphalt with the crabgrass, it's going to break up. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's top priority. Okay. Um, top priority after the mosquitoes. So. Okay, regarding your notation on the weeds at the, and among the rocks at the reservoir. Yes. Um, you said you're going to get the large ones out. Are you going to spray the rest? Uh, I, I don't know what the past policy has been. I'll find out. I don't know if it's a spray or if it's a chop. I, I don't know if there's, you know, if there's uh, regulations on spraying that close to the water supply. You might ask Jerry. I, yeah, I'll, I'll just talk with Jerry and, okay. and Terry and see what they see. Um, your notation about the Army Corps of Engineers doesn't want to worry about our trees and the river. Right. Um, they, there's got to be some state agency or someone that will address that. I don't know if it's... Um, well, I can check with those. Natural there. Resources, Department yeah. of Agriculture. But the, the ones I've seen, they're... They're like trees have been harvested. They're they're cut off. There's no branches. Yeah, we we walked. Uh, Chief and I and uh, John walked out to basically the reservoir last year. We noticed some fairly large trees blocking some issues. They've been harvested yeah. somewhere, and they were just barely laying there in the, yeah. in the, in the water. But yeah. Yeah, there there's some issues there, and we have to address that. So yeah, the Army Corps, you know, said unless it's navigable for a submarine or something like that, they're not really. Well, it might be helpful for a steamboat. We, we could do a river. Not a river. Clear it out. Yeah. Or not a river casino or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, we're on it though. We're uh, Jeff Dunn is going to have a look at it, and we already already told him about it. He's going to have a look. We're going to plan on it. And one other uh, question from a citizen or citizens mm -hmm. has to do with the uh, first Friday signs. Yes. Their statement was that we have a beautiful square with flowers and trees and bushes, and they think the signs block them. Uh, and they do to some extent, but uh, I don't know, somewhere around that next year when you put them out or not. It was an issue last year. I mean, those two groups kind of you know, butted heads a little bit. Um, a lot of, I mean, a lot, they put a lot of work in those. I mean, the first Friday people, you know, they, uh, they put a lot of work into First Friday too, 
So, so if there's an issue, we're, we're, now we can, you know, we can do something different next year. We can, we can invest in some signs and take them across maybe Sudesky Avenue or something and take those out. I'd be in favor of that. Yeah, well, I don't like I don't like the signs on the square either. But yeah. this year it does. So yeah. So on Saturday after first Friday, I, I'm I'm the one that takes them out. And, <coughs> and so and right away. And so I, I agree with you. I, I don't like them there at all. But um, they're you know out of respect to the people that run first Friday. Right now, it's what we it's all we have. It's the only option we have. I think that let people know. It's a, yeah. but, but they'll be going by Saturday. Come through there Saturday, they'll be gone. So, and I'll be stored. I, I would think, you know, a temporary sign would be set out. You know, uh, and, they, and I, do we have to have it set out for 30 days? Well, 90 days or whatever. But we can, you know, I mean, a week before put it out, hey, or, you know, the Friday before, hey, mm -hmm. this, this Friday, or, you know, because. It's like a billboard that you drive I by. Understand. Once you see it the first three times, you quit looking at it. I don't know. So. <laughs> Nobody's looking at it. Y'all you know, you know, make good points. I mean, it's nothing that we haven't discussed before. I'm on your side of this. So. But, I mean, um, for the people that put a lot of work into this to make this thing fly, um, it's, it's been a pretty successful promotion for the most part. You know, they had a little weather issue last time. But um, I think next year we need to tweak the sign. So. Let your friends know that you know we're gonna, we're gonna work on it. Any other questions, yes. the Mayor? Yes, Mr. Yes. Ross. Maybe more of a uh, circuit breaker question, but he's not here. But yeah. uh, some of the neighbors over in the uh, 200 block of uh, Woodlawn, okay, the church next to the elementary school tore that house down next to it. Uh, and the house is down, it's all replanted grass and everything. Mm -hmm. But the neighbors said, have told me that there's about 20 feet of sidewalk that's left all broken up. And there's a small section of our city curb that's broken up. Now they should be made, the contractors should be so, made to repair that, I would think, you know, so. Are you talking about wood? I'm not sure exactly what that is. I know. Uh, you know what it is? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll have, church. I'll have, uh, I'll have, uh, uh, yeah. But bro, go over and take a look at it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the sidewalk a, is the property. The church right next to the elementary right. Right on. and then there they had a house torn down, and but like say there's about 20, 25 feet of sidewalk that's left broken up. There's a small section of curb that's broken up. You know, the neighbors say, "Wait, you know, kids are going to be going to school yeah. in about three weeks." You know, so you know, so okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get out there to take a look at it. Yeah, tomorrow. thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else? I need a motion then to put the repair for the swimming pool into lands and buildings and finance. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Truca to put the repair of the swimming pool into lands and buildings and finance. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to the service director. Service director oh, yes. is not with us this evening. I have his report right here. Uh, bid opening for the board, uh, border patrol bid opening for the e Oakwood East and Nora water line will be Friday, August 4th, 2017 at 10 a.m. in council chambers. The fire department uh, repair bid is out. Specs have been picked up and emailed out this week. This is the second week of advertising. The bidding on the chiller, the advertisement will go out once the legislation has been passed. Uh, we welcome Eric Clay, our new uh, maintenance associate, uh, who comes to us uh, with uh, lots of uh, experience in HVAC and electricity, among other things. He's doing a good job. In three weeks now, doing a fantastic job. Um, airport grant has been accepted. All documents were signed and sent in. With Miller paid, but is it's approaching second phase. Start the week of August 21st, right after the Bratwurst Festival. The State Route 98 project will be going to bid in the fall, probably in October, and the work will begin in January. The budget meetings have been set. They're going to begin this month, and we hope to be ready by the end of September to meet with the Finance Committee. Um, heads up for on the uh, Labor Day garbage pickup. I know it's about a month out, but uh, as usual, the Monday garbage will be picked up on Tuesday. 
and um, you make sure you have your garbage out by 7 a.m. as usual. Um, three referrals, OPWC for 2018 to Service Committee and Finance Committee. Another referral for Park Easement to Public Lands and Building Committee. And a referral, um, let's see, is that right, Rhonda, that last one? Right. So we, are we, we're not repealing that one, are we? No, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, a new, new, one. So new, new resolution for new, the, new, new, for new the new. loan. So we're just going to refer, refer a new resolution for the WPCF loan agreement as an emergency to the Finance Committee. Okay. Any questions about the uh, service director's report? Okay, I need a motion to refer the OPWC for 2018 to the Service Committee and Finance Committees. So moved. Motion by Mr. Weyerbaugh, second by Mr. Sack to refer the OPWC for 2018 to Service Committee and Finance. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. We also need to refer the park easement uh, to Public Lands and Buildings Committee. So Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second? Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Ms. Sack, to uh, put the park easement to Public Lands and Buildings Committee. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. And finally, uh, we need uh, the uh, Water Pollution Control Fund WPCF loan agreement. It is an emergency. We need it to go to Finance Committee, and the deadline is Friday. So uh, the, uh, what we're going to see is uh, uh, announcing a special uh, council meeting Thursday, tomorrow evening. We've already announced it, correct? Yes, it's already been sent out to the media. We're gonna have a special council meeting uh, tomorrow evening after the committee meetings so we can meet the uh, August 4th deadline for this. So I need a motion to put that into committee. Second. I'm sorry, who said yes? Mr. O'Rourke and second was Mr. Piper. Motion by Mr. O'Rourke, second by Mr. Piper for the Water Pollution Control Fund Loan Agreement. All those in, to Finance Committee, all those in favor <coughs> say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed say no. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, that takes care of those two. Turn the page. Law Director. Mr. Atlas. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, no written report. We entered some uh, stats. Uh, July is a uh, tax court free month, so nothing there. Uh, nothing to refer. And, uh, that's all I have. Thank oh, you. except for the chief. He looks very questionable back there. Can I pose a question? Always. I, I'm speaking on behalf of the board of Cyrus Area Youth Soccer. Uh, we were down the park uh, looking. Yes. Notice the uh, looks like the, the house on Clinton Street might be coming down. Is the white one? Yes. Yes. What's the status of that? Uh, some of your uh, officers, as well as the uh, special response team, uh, last week practiced in the house, so it may have suffered some <laughs> slight damage. Um, but it is uh, slated for demolition. It is one of the uh, is one of the first ones that, that are kind of on the uh, on the mix for for demolition. I think the contract's already been done. Yeah, on the contracts have been signed. And yeah, it was, I think it's in the yeah. first five kind of group on those. And then um, Land Bank controls that, and I believe Land Bank. Uh, I can't speak specifically, but I believe Land Bank has been in touch with Bucyrus Youth Soccer about uh, giving them or allowing them access and control of that. Yes. We once had, it's, we've once had, it's back to grass. We've had two board meetings recently in the summertime, um, and we were curious about that because of uh, the uh, possibility of having a pavilion added to the park um, in the near future but uh, by, with a property, another property down there. Yeah, and, and then there's a little more Land. Um, I think we had. I don't know who we talked. Was that? We talked at some point in time about the alleys and everything across the street, and maybe how to better use some of that land. So yeah, we 
we can refer that to public lands and buildings if you want to kind of discuss that. I don't know if it's premature yet or not. We, we do have, uh, well, I'll ask Matt McCoy, the president of the soccer program at this particular time to again return to council or do you have a particular venue he should approach uh -oh. with ideas, big picture oh. ideas about the park? First I'd like to give it to uh, Gary uh, with respect to land bank and find out what their timetable is as far as how they're going to deal with that, that house. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, um, we can talk about, you know, uh, long term planning down there. And you can come to council and give a presentation to us, yeah? Okay. We'd love to hear it. I'll, I'll give you a quick update if it's okay about that. Um, August 5th, 9 to 11 a.m. is the, is one of the in-person sign-up times, and anyone interested in the Cyrus Area Youth Soccer, it's all online the registration, but they'll get assistance 9 to 11 on Saturday to, to do that. There's Wi-Fi at the park. Sure. And um, there's also Soccer Fest, Tuesday, August 15th. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. That will be the last day for registration, online or in person. Soccer Fest is a party in the park with soccer and other events. And the Cyrus Soccer Club, the high school kids, there's not yet a high school program other than Galleon, but there's 40 uh, kids, age 15 through 18, that are out for soccer this fall in Cyrus, and they're um, going to compete against other high schools. Um, they uh, will have an alumni game the night of Soccer Fest, and then September 11th, Galleon High School is going to play the high school kids in Cyrus at 7.30. So, mark your calendar for that. And anyone that needs assistance registering can see me at the police department during business hours. I'll, I'll help them. We have Wi-Fi. We can get on a tablet and, and help them do registration. And it's. Uh, it's online at BucyrusSoccer.com. And, and it's not just for kids at Bucyrus. I mean, especially with the little kids. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of them down here sometimes. I don't know where they all come from. But they're, they're from all over the place. <laughs> we have, uh, it's a, it's we have booby, booby thing. 29 teams uh, last spring, uh, hopefully the, about that same number, and um, over 400 kids played in the spring. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's All your references to the park mean the soccer park down on Lane Street, correct? Harmon, Harmon Park. Harmon Park. Yeah. Lane Street Field, Harmon Park. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was a great event last year when Galleon played for Cyrus on the old football stadium. So it gave an idea. Yeah, it was pretty significant. Some of us played football on the old football stadium. Not that old. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any other questions regarding Long Mr. Turkett? Uh, what's the status of the property on Eastbourne Street on the South Side Street where we had that recent fire? Uh, oh, uh, there's three or four properties that were involved in the fire. Uh, one was mostly demolished by fire. Uh, the one beside it is being turned over to land bank to be demolished. Uh, and as is what's left of the one that was the, the main fire uh, property. Um, <clears throat> the one to the east, I'm not sure what the status of that one was yet. The fire wasn't, uh, it wasn't as involved in the fire. Um, just had some, it looks like just maybe some stress off. But the two that were severely damaged are both uh, now uh, or working away to land bank to be fully demolished. So as a city, do we have to put snow fence around that property? Right now, I went by there and it was just yellow tape and all the tape is ripped off, off the trees. And uh, I didn't know whether it was a liability issue for the city for kids getting in there. And, it know. should be uh, a burden of the property owner uh, to, to secure it and, and protect it uh, and or their insurance agent. But um, once it becomes something that's part of the land bank, our agreement with the land bank is we would generally secure and uh, we mow and things like that. So we would probably take steps to protect it at that point in time. Um, which I'll, I'll take a look at that and see about maybe securing those. I haven't been, uh, well, right now, right now you can walk right into the property and walk into the basement <coughs> and everything that's okay. yeah, and exposed. So. Uh, I was just curious too. Is uh, is there any uh, 
been any court action or anything like that on some of the properties that have been went through their due process on on uh, you know uh, that being taken care of. Yeah. I, I, yeah, we've got uh, we've got a number that are uh, in municipal court right now with uh, criminal violations. Um, we have a number more that uh, we're trying to affect service on with, with those criminal summonses. A lot of the owners are outside of town, and we are um, our mo list has just skyrocketed. And uh, to Mr. Works question earlier about just you know the growth of the visas of it's citywide. It's it, it, it's worse than since I've been here. And it's, it's probably worse ever as far as I can imagine. Um, and so our our groups are just really overworked. So we're looking at uh, something that the city hasn't done. It is provided for in our in our ordinances though is uh, criminal charges for uh, not mowing your yard. A lot of hoops that have to be jumped through for that uh, certified mail notice. And, and delay, but um, you know we have. I don't even know how many uh, on the on the continuous mode list. I think it's like thirty or forty. There's a lot. It's it's. I mean, so it, it's it's getting out of hand, and uh, and it, it, it's a minor misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to hundred fifty dollar fine, but up to hundred fifty dollar fine every time we have to do it. And uh, we're uh, the question is, you know, how much more time and labor are we going to put into this? But it's got to come to an end. So that, that's something we're going to be pursuing uh, for the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Moving on to the audit, Mr. Schiffer. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you have the statement of cash position and the revenue tallies and the income tax comparisons. Um, I have received several questions regarding revenue in the sewage disposal fund, which you know appears to be drastically low right now, but this is this is due to um, the bond anticipation note for Plymouth Street that we're going to be applying for, and I will be referring that at a later time. I've talked to Bond Council about it. Right now, um, and, and that's five hundred thousand dollars that isn't showing anywhere in receipts except on reports right now. It's in the estimates. So since we haven't received that yet, that's what makes this look so low. Uh, we're waiting right now. Uh, I talked to the service director the other day about seeing if we can get a new updated breakdown of uh, what the cost could be since the last one we have is from 2015. It's two years old, and we may need a new estimate on that. Uh, so that we have a better idea when we go for this bond anticipation note uh, of time frames and that kind of thing. So uh, there'll be more news on that later, but that's why that number looks so so low. Uh, I do have uh, some referrals. We're going to need an appropriation in the derelict building liability fund. Uh, this was due to the fire on Warren Street, uh, we have an insurance deposit for $4,666.67, so we need to get that appropriated. I will also have the numbers for the appropriations I referred earlier um, for telephone bills. I'll have that for the finance meeting tomorrow night. And also, um, we've received a bill for our annual pledge to the Crawford County um, Education and Economic Development Partnership. That's too much to say. <laughs> but at any rate, the current agreement that we have says that it will expire at the end of calendar year 2016 unless a one-year extension is agreed to in writing by both parties. And we don't have that extension at this point, so I can't hit our pledge. So we need to refer this to the proper committee okay. or person, the law director, I don't know. But anyway, we need to renew that. Okay, so the question comes up is, do we need legislation to do this, or can the administration just sign the extension? Because we never did any legislation to begin with specifically for this, but it's been in the budget for the last two years. Right, it's authorized in the budget. It's yes. It's in the budget to get this year, but yes. the administration can. Yeah, so, but the agreement says that we need to do an extension 
So do we need actual legislation to do that, or the administration can handle no, it? The, the, but the, the money's already appropriated, so. Okay. Uh, right, so the okay. administration can they can yeah. uh, that thought after we talked. Right. I, yeah. I was thinking, I thought that there was a discussion about this. So you need to work it out with them to sign this extension. Okay. Someone needs to write up something. To yeah. This thing, right? Do we have a copy of the original? We'll get a copy for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else for the, oh, we need to, to uh, do these referrals for the auditor into a uh, finance committee. Uh, for the derelict building liability fund, uh, additional insurance deposit, uh, I need a motion. So put that into, oh wait, we might as well do them together. Right. For finance committee, and we also have additional appropriations to cover telephone bills. Do I have a motion now? Okay, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Weirbaugh, second? Second. Second by Ms. Sack for the uh, derelict building liability fund and the additional uh, telephone bills to finance committee. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Police Chief, does the Chief have any words that he wants to share with us this evening? I forgot to say one thing. I knew you'd always forget one thing. Come on up and have a say. The Roberts Festival. Uh, I'll go back to the drug driving incident and we'll be making a public notice. And that picture is uh, a great poster. Um, drive sober or get pulled over happens uh, leading into the Labor Day weekend and coincides with the beginning of the Roberts Festival. So I remind everyone to pay attention to. That goes for everybody. And I, you know, if you have a root canal and they give you the pills, be careful. You shouldn't be driving. Have a medical procedure. Uh, have a driver, things like that. Uh, make sure that you're uh, alert and able to handle the vehicle. And that uh, goes without saying that drinking and driving is a uh, deadly combination. So drive sober or get pulled over. Uh, coincides with the beginning of the Broadwurst Festival and runs through Labor Day weekend. And we'll be focusing on impaired driving. Um, also Broadwurst Festival time. We're going to try a first ever three versus three soccer tournament on our park. It used to be rugby down there oh. during Browers Festival. We're going to add that. Uh, it's a fundraiser for the Cyrus area to do the soccer. So uh, we look for that. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, I need a motion to accept the city officer's report. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by McKeever, second by Massac. Accept the city officers' reports. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passed. This is where we have visitors' input regarding reports of standing and, city, and of city officers. Does anyone want to address council this evening? None? Oh, yes. Did we miss the trigger? No, we did not miss it. We skipped it. Okay? okay. It's not available right now. Thank you. Okay. Any okay, none? For consideration of proposed legislation for the first time. We have uh, two pieces of legislation. Um, ordinance number 37, 2017, amending and supplementing section 914.01 entitled extension procedures of chapter 914, entitled new construction and size of water lines and part nine entitled streets, utilities and public services code of the codified ordinances of the city of Cyrus, Ohio. That is referred back to finance. Resolution number 223-2017, authorizing and directing the Bucyrus Public Service Safety Director in behalf of the City of Bucyrus, Ohio, to advertise for bids and enter into a contract or contracts not to exceed $88,000 with the lowest and best bidder or bidders for the replacement of the air conditioner at City Hall. Finally, authorizing and directing the Bucyrus City Auditor to draw a warrant or warrants in payment, therefore, from the appropriate appropriation or appropriations and declaring an emergency, and that goes to public lands and buildings. Okay, thank you. I need this, uh, we need to accept this as the first reading. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Piper, second by Mr. Truca, to accept this as the first reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion passed. We need to refer 37-2017 uh, back to finance. Resolution 223-2017 to public lands and buildings. This is the time where we have public participation 
If any member of the general public may present their input or comments on legislation that has been read for the first time. And anyone this evening? No one? Do we need a recess this evening? No. Okay. Uh, committee reports on pending legislation. Finance committee? Finance committee is uh, favor ordinance 37 2017 water line extensions. Okay, thank you. Uh, public lands and buildings? Public lands and buildings is uh, favorable, favorable to resolution 223-2017, uh, the city hall air conditioner. Okay, I need a motion to accept these reports. So Second. Motion by Mr. Piper, second by Mr. McKeever to accept the reports. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, for further consideration of pending legislation, for the second and third reading of proposed ordinance number 37-2017, which are the water line extensions, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules and waive the reading of the caption and text? So moved. Second. McKeever? Yes. Waterball? Yes. Truca? Yes. Sam? Yes. O'Rourke? Yes. Pfeiffer? Yes. Ross? Here. Ordinance number 37, 2017. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed ordinance number 37-2017? So moved. Pfeiffer? Yes. O'Rourke? Yes. McKeever? Yes. Ross? Here. Waterball? Yes. Truca? Yes. Sack? Yes. Ordinance number 37-2017 is duly adopted. For the second and third readings of resolution, proposed resolution 223-2017, which is the City Hall air conditioner replacement, do I hear a motion to suspend the rules, waive the reading of the caption and text, and declare it an emergency? So moved. Second. Waterball? Yes. Akira? Yes. Ross? Yeah. Truca? Yes. Sack? Yes. O'Rourke? Yes. Piper? Yes. Resolution number 223-2017. Do I hear a motion to adopt proposed resolution 223-2017? Mm -hmm. Second. O'Rourke? Yes. McKeever? Yes. Ross? Yeah. Wireball? Yes. Truca? Yes. Sack? Yes. Piper? Yes. Resolution number 223-2017 is duly adopted. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any old business they'd like to bring up at this time? None. Moving on to new and miscellaneous business. August the 4th, first Friday in downtown Desaris. Honoring hometown heroes. Shines Par Art Park ribbon cutting is at 4.30. Do you want to elaborate yes. on that a little bit, Mr. Be, Mayor? It's going to be, an, uh, I guess, an unofficial opening uh, of the park to the public. Uh, the park is not really done. We have some more things that go in the park yet, but uh, we wanted to get over for this last first Friday. So at 4.30, if you would, uh, are free, please join us for a ribbon cutting. We're going to have uh, several artists in the park that night. Uh, so it should be a good event. And then the, the plans that will be to have a dedication in either late September or early October, uh, as soon as the, the wall design is finished. So we'll keep informed on that. Okay, thank you very much. August the 17th through the 19th is the 50th annual Bussard's Broward Festival. August the 22nd is the first day of school for Bussard's City Schools. And uh, another reminder, September the 16th is the dedication of the new water treatment plant beginning at 10 a.m. Uh, anyone else with any new or miscellaneous business to bring before council? Um, yes. Joyce, what about the Together We Heard, Together We Heal annual banquet? Is that Oh. That will be August 29th. Okay. And it's at Galleon this year. And who can they contact? Uh, for tickets, you can contact me, I guess. Okay, in the auditor's office, okay. Yeah. And that's a fundraiser for It's Together a fundraiser for Together We Heard, Together We Heal. Okay. Uh, we had our uh, national night out party at our recovery house last night and had a good turnout there. And we're working on moving forward to hopefully open our women's house uh, after the first of the year. So we have a property. Uh, it has been turned over to us. We're working on grants right now. And so we're moving forward. So everybody help, please. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you
Very good. Thank you. It's, it's, it's just good to hear the news that there's always something new coming up that doing what we can. Okay? Um, anything else for new and new business? Uh, we're all here this evening. Uh, the joint regular committee meetings are tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. All referrals from this council meeting and any open project list items may be discussed during the committee meetings. Those uh, for discussion tomorrow night are? We have uh, five referrals from tonight. The uh, split swing pool repairs to public, land and build, public lands and buildings and finance from the administration. The OPWC grant for 2018 uh, to service and finance from the administration. The All Miller Park easement to public lands and buildings from administration. The WPCLF loan uh, application to finance from the administration. And various appropriations uh, that is also to finance from the auditor. Also for tomorrow evening, we have three things that are already in committee on the agenda. The uh, status of the Pines Reservoir, that's in public lands and buildings. The ambulance contract, that's in health and safety. And the uh, use of the public right of way in the downtown business district uh, for retail and not call and dining sales, that's in uh, potting. Okay, thank you. The next WBCO radio program is Wednesday, August the 9th. Uh, John Rostash uh, will be, uh, I think he's already recorded it, uh, but it will be on Wednesday, August the 9th at 9, is it 9 a.m., I believe? Okay. Uh, nothing else to come before council. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. McKeever, second by Mr. Weyerbaugh to adjourn at 8.22 p.m.